I'm going to die you. This is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms. And those were the words spoken by my grandson at the age of five, I think. Maybe six. But five sounds about right. So, I got intrigued, you know, in terms of video games or violent video games. Because he had been playing them. Um, And I think he's probably seen the entire uh, Walking Dead series. But... One of the questions, you know, that crops up from time to time is, do violent video games lead to violence? And, you know, pretty much every study says no. Now, there's there's a couple of, you know, codicils to that. You know, first off, a lot of the studies are flawed. How do you evaluate violence? Um, so... What they wound up doing in in at least one study was going, okay, well, there's no proof that it leads to increased violence. So they're comparing the crime rate in the United States with the crime rate in other countries. Well, there's a flaw in and of itself right there because a lot of the countries, um, you know, you exhibit violent behavior. They don't let you out on the street. Um, They put you someplace where you can't harm everybody else. So then I started thinking about the fact that, all right, if it doesn't lead to violence, could it lead to dehumanizing or devaluing human life? So while not directly leading to um, violent behavior, was there another facet that you could look at? And, you know, there were times um and this is i actually think it just came up again recently but the attempt to banning violent games or labeling them as violent um and you know the pesky little first amendment keeps cropping up and you know if you're going to stand up for rights of people you can't decide which rights you're allowed to have and which ones you can deny So it gets, you know, a little murky there. So what have the studies shown? All right, well, the first part in terms of violence is that violent games do in fact lead to increases in aggressive thoughts and behaviors. But not every aggressive act is a violent act. So, you know, you've got to make sure you can discriminate between those. And that's where the studies, you know, kind of have issues. And the other one is there's virtually no useful data about preteens and playing violent video games. So, you know, a couple of studies looked at it and said, all right, well, maybe playing video games is a risk factor, meaning an indicator for maybe you'll become a violent person down the road. And that really didn't pan out too well either. So where did that leave us? All right, that left me in a quandary as I'm digging through some research. And I found some from NIH, National Institutes of Health. And they actually had a a very recent uh, paper showing that video game violence can actually lead to dehumanizing or dehumanness in others. And it can, in fact, as I said before, lead to aggressive behaviors. So, does that answer my question? Well, no. Uh, It still left me kind of out there going, all right, the devaluing or dehumanizing, that's kind of where I'm coming from. All right, I can understand that, you know, the fact that I played violent video games doesn't mean I'm going to run out and go shoot some people up. 
Um, and in fact, they did a study. You know, people that were involved in shootings and stuff, they looked at it and said, well, a bunch of them played violent video games, but not all of them. And there was no link between, you know, the violent behavior and the violent video games. Okay. So, interesting data that did come up was... Um, Playing excessive amounts of game time, so playing violent video games. If you were in a high school student, it showed an increase in aggressive behavior. Um, The studies didn't really discriminate between boys and girls. Um, And, you know, if you look at the number of girls that are gamers now, they're they're approaching 50-50. However... To get back to it is if you were a college student, you played a lot of video games, your grades went down. No shock there. Um, The other interesting thing was, um, and this was a 2016 or 2019 study. I probably should have written it down. Um, the, The most interesting thing they showed was that when a new game came out, uh, there was a decrease in violence in the community in general. Um, I guess that makes sense too. A new game comes out, everyone's run out and got it or uh, downloaded it, and they're so busy playing the games they haven't really got a chance to uh, go out and commit crimes. And at one point, and this is up around 2020, there you know there was some data showing that. Playing video games led to a decrease in teen crimes. I wasn't able to find anything current about it. So after, you know, weeding through all of my stuff. I shouldn't say my stuff. After weeding through all of my research, attempting to answer my question. um, Where did that leave us? All right, well, does playing violent video games lead to violence? It is pretty solid on that being a no, but it did lead to more aggressive behaviors. And one of the weird studies did show that gamers in general, like middle school kids that were playing video games, and I um, were, I think, almost 50% more likely to get involved in a fight and then non-gamer middle school students. That's boys and girls. So, you know, kind of interesting. So maybe there's something to be said between uh, <clears throat> looking at adolescents and raging hormones and playing violent video games. Maybe there's a weird synergy there. But, you know, let's just say there's no link to it leading to violence. Um. Does it desensitize people playing violent video games? Does it desensitize you to violence? The answer was pretty solidly yes. And not only did it desensitize you to violence, the people that were playing all these violent video games, and I'm talking about, you know, teenagers, um, they actually demonstrated less concern for victims of violent crimes. And then we go back to me, which is, yes, so I think I've kind of made a case for, you know, devaluing human life. You're busy shooting things up, whether it's a first-person shooter or something else. You're even, um, I think, Five Nights at Freddy's, which is a pretty violent um, PlayStation game. So... If you're desensitizing or becoming inured to the violence, maybe you're desensitized to the point where, okay, um, I'm not a violent person, but, all right, well, if they got killed, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, not my problem. That may be part of the issue right there. Um, the one thing that I could not find with this, well, first, let me finish this thought, which is they 
definitively showed that there was no link to violent video games and becoming a mass shooter. So let's go back to the one thing I was not able to find, which was what about the effect of violent video games on already violent people? The nature of crime in a lot of areas has changed. It's no longer just break in. They'll break in and shoot you. Are people so desensitized or um, or dehumanized life because of the video games? Are they just like, okay, bang, and you're dead? That's the one thing I tried to get an answer to. And... You know, again, the data pretty much supports it does not promote violence. It just promotes aggression. It does lead to dehumanizing or devaluing human life. And it desensitizes you to the victims of the crimes. So can some of those things work together that if you're already, for lack of a better term, a not nice person, um, does it make you even more of a loose cannon with, you know, your hands on a firearm. That one I'd be interested to see a study for. Unfortunately, I could not find one. And I did search exhaustively. However, um, my opinion is that the devaluing or dehumanizing from playing the violent video games It's not the increase in aggressive behavior. It's the effect potentially on already violent people. So if you're not going to, if you're already inured to the fact that, you know, victims don't have the same value as anybody else, what's the difference if they get shot? So that's my thought on the, our thoughts on the topic. Hopefully no one will die you. Um, until you're like in your 90s or 100s. If you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to call or text to 919-808-6480. Feel free to um, email me at info at quarterhorsearms.com. Feel free to check out our website at quarterhorsearms.com and I'm Alan with Quarter Horse Arms in Snow Camp, North Carolina. You folks be good and be safe out there. Have a great day.